Hello and welcome back, beautiful soul, to Permission to Follow Your Inner GPS. I am your host and guide, Angel Lady Terry Marie. And it is with my great pleasure and honor to be reconnecting with a beautiful friend and sister, also a business colleague, Brenda Edelman. She is amazing. Maybe you have caught her first episode with us way back when we first started this podcast. If not, go back and check it out. It is enlightening, it's transparent, it's vulnerable, and it's real. And today we're going to be talking about some of the similar things, which is forgiveness. And yet, Brenda's going to be telling us about all kinds of things in her one-woman show. So please help me welcome back this beautiful lady, Brenda Edelman. Hello, gorgeous, and welcome back. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. I'm <laughs> really happy to be here and excited about what we'll be talking about today. Me too. I was going to say, so enlighten us. <laughs> What's it like having, producing, creating, being on the road, I ha this is nothing I know anything about, so <laughs> please share. Okay, so I have a one-woman show based on my life story and the power of forgiveness. Uh, I was already a an actress when I created this show, and I really created it. I created it in a top acting class in L.A., literally just as a storytelling exercise, never thinking it would become a show. I was terrified, you know, my personal life story is, is a big one. And I, back then it was before I had done any kind of inner work. So I felt a lot of shame around what happened. Um, my father shot and killed my mother and married her sister. And I was terrified to put it up. Uh, it was a short scene, but I knew I had to be real because I was hiding behind um, well, certainly in that class, I was hiding behind characters I played. In real life, I was afraid to talk about my story because I would break down. And when I wrote the scene, it was, uh, I had inner guidance that I had to put it up. And instead of getting the judgment that I thought I would get, I got a standing ovation. I had a producer, uh, a director that wanted to work with me shortly after that, a producer. So I expanded it into a one person show. So, um, even when I put up the very first version of the show, I literally got to the, uh, <laughs> I got to the performance. It might've been opening night and I got to the theater early and my neck was like this. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't move. And I, you know, one person show, I played 12 characters. I'm all over the stage. Luckily, my first director was very spiritual. I believe she had like a cobalt blue bottle with water by the sun and she had me drink it and then she did some body work and it healed. But really what I found out that it was, it's like there was this energy stuck in my body and some of it was the masculine and all this stuff. And when I, when I wrote the piece, I try not to vilify anyone. Um, and yet I still hadn't healed a lot. I was still in an on again, off again relationship with my father. So, um, Years later, I've now performed the show for over 12,000 people worldwide for some tough audiences, you would think, women prisoners, youth at risk, mm -hmm. great audiences, because I am real, I am raw, I'm authentic, I, I'm funny, there's a lot of comedy in it, because I feel like once I was able to reach the level of comedy, I knew I was starting to heal from it, and I also went back and got a master's degree in spiritual psychology, like took time off after the first production so that I could be like, why am I so depressed? People are laughing and crying, but I go home and I'm like miserable. And so I really mm -hmm. learned the process of how to mm, take radical responsibility for my life, let go of judgment, express my anger in a healthy way, um, be creative. And th that's what I teach my clients now with the forgiveness. But um, so what was the question? <laughs> You're doing great. Just kidding. <laughs> you, you know, it's interesting. You you bring up that you you were got you were able to get to a level of comedy, and that you knew was beginning to heal more. And yet, when you went home, you still faced the rest of it because you hadn't yet learned how to deal with all the layers of yeah. the other. It was the anger. So I have a three-step forgiveness process. And so 
in the three-step forgiveness process, which I developed after I studied, was the healthy release of anger. And that's actually step one. That I have exercises about that in step one of my process because that's what I hadn't done. I suppressed my anger. There was a little bit I was able to release in the show as the character, so that's why it was so healing. But then I would stuff it. I actually wouldn't go all out in the anger because I felt like, this is really behind the scenes as an actor too, I felt like I had to protect the audience from that, mm. which is actually a way of, not actually protecting the audience because you're not allowing them for a full catharsis, but it's hard to do that if you haven't done the inner work. So, um, so yeah, so I was able to, that, that's, so that's why like as a trained actress, I can do comedy and stuff like that. And so people would laugh, but then I'd be like, I feel lonely and miserable and what a, why am I doing this? So that's why I took the time off. And, and, and in that program, two year program, I learned how to get in touch with the anger because it was so suppressed. It was like, of course I should forgive. I have to forgive, but how do you really do it? And why do you have to do it? So I feel like the, the anger release was so important. And in that program, I learned how to do it on many levels, but it's a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. It can be a destination after you've done as much work as I have, because I have fully forgiven my father. But I remember I graduated the program and then I went to an anger workshop. And that is really what unleashed stuff for me because it, it wasn't spiritual, mental, emotional anymore. It was physical. And I was able to like, I literally, there were primal screams that came out of me that I didn't even know who that was because of self-identifying as such a nice person that doesn't do stuff like that. And that was super healing. And then, you know, continuing to do the work when stuff came up, you know? It's so important. You know, I remember dealing with some anger issues a long time ago, and it's hard to do it on your own in a way because you don't know what, what do you do with it? If you unleash this monster, then what? Right, and that's why it's healthy anger release. It's not like unleash and then want to hurt yourself or someone else yeah, exactly uh, and yeah. and then and even if a person doesn't have those particular tendencies how do you how do you heal it get rid of it, at least release it let it go whatever you you do with it and, and not become so consumed by the anger yeah well it's um that's why the the main exercise that i give to my clients is something that I learned in that program. And of course mm -hmm. we were getting, uh, you know, grades on everything. So we had, had to do the work, <laughs> um, but it's a 32 day process, but someone can do it just once um, to start the energy going, but it, it's free form writing. I've also witnessed this at, at a, you know, prison that I volunteered at, like people doing this, it works. It's a way of getting that toxic energy out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not about indulgence. So it's different from journal writing in that it's not writing and then reading it over because otherwise you're anchoring back the energy. It's literally a place to put your writing so that you're getting the toxic negativity uh, out of you. But it's designed that it's a minimum of 15 minutes because within 15, you know, you're not thinking you're just writing. And if it's less than 15 minutes, it could be your laundry list, whatever, you know, you have to do right. later in the day, but it's no more than two hours at a time because if you go over two hours, it can turn into indulgence and yes. staying in the energy. So at the end of the two hours, it's about like blessing the time that you took, knowing that you're cared for, knowing that you're caring for yourself by writing these things out um, you know, tearing up the pages, lighting them on fire in a sacred ceremony, getting them out of the house. And, um, and then if the energy is still stuck, it's like, you're not focusing on that. You're going on with your day. And then if it's still stuck, the reason why 32 days or 30 days is so powerful is that the next day, even if you have 15 minutes, it's like showing your inner self that has been so wounded that you as the adult are there and you're going to listen. So usually within 30 days you can really get to the heart of something and at least release some kind of layer you know i agree that that is a similar technique that i learned myself through um, channeled guidance and i teach it to my clients you know letter writing and then burning it and i recently just this morning one of my clients were talking and i said let write a letter so i did that last night but i haven't burned it yet and i said okay 
So she has an outside fire pit, so she sometimes gets to do this late at night. I said, okay, so I understand. <laughs> you don't want to be outside late at night to do this. So how about as an alternative, tear it up, not in anger, but just tear it up in tiny little pieces, and then you can burn it later or put it in the rubbish bin, but you've got to let go of the, of the emotion that's in there. Otherwise, you carry it over. So, oh. So oh, she yeah. was still carrying that. Yeah. So she hadn't really, really released it. Right. That's why it's so important to get it out of the house, too. I had a client who I very clearly go over this exercise, who then I spoke with her later on, and she was like, oh, I'm still not feeling well. And I asked her about it. She's like, oh, yeah, no, I reread that stuff. I'm like, no, don't no. reread that. You're anchoring it in. So the other thing is it's important to have a coach. It's important to go see a therapist. You know, do whatever you can. Like, when I was in the darkest despair, I did whatever I could. I went to shamans. I went to healers. I went for acupuncture. I, I did the work. I, I went to the master's degree. You know, so it's not a magic pill. And so if someone just thinks it's magical. But the other thing is, you know what? I don't know how it is now, but in almost every state, there's like a sliding scale therapist that you could go to if it's a matter of that. Or I didn't always need to see a therapist, but sometimes I needed to call a friend afterwards yes. or call a friend before. So it's like all those things, setting yourself up for success, but not just, you know, dropping, getting the support you need. Yeah. So tell us more about the one person shows. So now the show is like so much fun for me. So when I came back, uh, after I took the time off, I rewrote the ending with a very powerful new ending. So the first ending was... Uh, it's almost like writing your life into existence. The first ending of my show was basically, will I love and trust again? Because I didn't know. And I did. And during that time off, I fell in love and, you know, bought a home and, and did all this stuff. And then when I end, I took my dad to court for wrongful death big empowering decision that I did. Mm -hmm. And so I got to rewrite the ending into that and also write into how I was able to forgive him. And so I have a forgiveness ceremony in there. And so the new ending was about how do you forgive the unforgivable and, and, and why to do it for yourself. And so I've fairly consistently been doing the show. I have taken, you know, a year or two or three off at a time. Um, and now I'm in the mode of performing again since the last year. And I, it, I've, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I think I've performed for over 12,000 people now. And there's just the very first time that I'm remembering now, the very first time I did like the show in public, right? Cause there's doing the show in class and then there's getting out of the comfort zone of class, even though it didn't, it felt terrifying at the time to do it in public. And I was going, I did a raw food cleanse retreat. I went away and they had a talent night and I did like seven minutes of my show. And I couldn't believe the response. It was so amazing. And um, one of the one of the people that were, were someone was in the audience. The next day, he and his parents were there. They came up to me, and they were just like gloat. They were just like, "Oh my god, that was so amazing!" This and that. And and uh, it turns out that one of the brothers in the family committed suicide, mm. and they had never talked about him until they saw my show the night before. And I was so moved. And my show is not about that, although I'm thinking maybe I must have done a scene about maybe thinking about that, but that's not what my show is about. And I just remember thinking, wow, I have to expand the show. I have to make a bigger version because this really affects people. I had something similar like that happen. I did the show in Vienna, Austria, and someone came up to me after the show and said, my brother died of AIDS in the, I don't know if it was the eighties or eighties or nineties, probably in the beginning part of it. And she said, I haven't talked about him. And, you know, watching your show made me understand that I love him. Like I want to, I want to think about him again. And it was again, one of these moments where I was like, my show's not about that, and yet I'm so vulnerable on stage, and, I, and the show is so much about not being ashamed of anything that we feel, anything that we've done, and so that has always given me the impetus to continue even when I take time off. And so 
the last year, uh, I've been doing an abridged version of my show, like 35 minutes of it with two other actors who also have their own, they're also critically acclaimed actors or uh, storytellers uh, called Divas in Danger. So my show is called My Brooklyn Hamlet because my fa- I think I might've said my father also married my aunt. I, I don't remember if I said that. And, um, <laughs> <You did. laughs> like Shakespeare. Uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet. So Divas in Danger is about escape, betrayal, and budget plastic surgery. Mine is about the betrayal. And so I've been going on the road with these other two women, and um, we've performed at the Long Beach Convention Center for a conference. We've uh, performed at various arts and cultural centers. We performed in the theater in Long Beach, um, and we performed in Albuquerque. We were just invited to to go back and do a solo fest, be part of their solo festival, and I also get to do my full length show there. And then we're going to Mexico. We were performing in Taos and Santa Fe. So, and then we're performing. Well, when this airs, we may have performed all those places already. We're performing in Torrance as well, um, the first week in February. So, like, it's it's really exciting to to reach people with my message. And um, and there are some really um, great things about performing with other people as well. And I love performing my show alone, like just the full length version, because there's things I can't keep in the show when I'm doing an abridged version. Well, some of the humor I have to take out. <laughs> and there's a lot of humor. It kind of gives your audience and you a little bit of a, okay, breather. Right. You right. to then continue exactly on. For me, exactly. It gives me a breather. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of comedy in my, in my abridged version, there's a lot of comedy in the first half, but then I have to kind of go for the storyline, which after my mm-hmm. mother is killed, you know, I, I had to take out humorous parts that, you know, it sounds weird, humorous parts, but you know, it's as much a coming of age story and like finding myself. So I had to take out some, uh, some nuances that were funny so that the story could just, you know go in a direct line. Yeah. You, you mentioned a couple times how people in the audience um, come up to you with different stories. And even though your show is not about suicide or AIDS related types of, of transition or death, you're able to help them tap back into that in such a way that it helps to release themselves from whatever it is they think they're supposed to be carrying or holding on inside. Yeah. That is so powerful and so magical, not as a whimsy, but such a gift. It's a magical gift to be released from all of that. It's really the shame. I mean, I think that's the thing that a lot of people, people resonate with. Like, you know, it's my show's not preachy. It's not mm-hmm. like it's not like a talk or a public speaker that sometimes when we're speaking because I do speak too, it can be it can be a little preachy, but because it's done in the context of entertainment, it's like this is my story, this is what I went through, and I am just like rock for everybody. So what's really beautiful is people just take what works for them. And I remember when I put the show together in the beginning, I was like, people aren't going to relate to this because how many people's father has have killed their mother and, and married their aunt. <laughs> and um, what I recognized right away is that it was the humanity in it. Everybody, if we're, you know, here, we've experienced loss. We've experienced betrayal unless we're super sh- uh, sheltered. And, and some of the places I'm willing to go to, like I said in the beginning, I wasn't really willing to go to, I wanted to kill myself and I'm going to do it because I'm in so much pain, but not in the speaking of it, but in the acting of it, I would just pull back slightly. And what I noticed is it was not cathartic for me. Mm -hmm. So the audience were probably stuck a little. So now I'm willing and through skill, I'm able to go there because I, Brenda, am not living it. I'm acting it. So it's this whole level of my acting getting better as well, which now I, you know, teach people how to do one person shows too, because I know the breakthroughs that I've had in the acting alone have been so cathartic for me and for the audience. There's so much pain, shame, guilt that people carry about different kinds of things because it's not allowed to be talked about 
or whatever the reasons are. And there's so much that we as an individual go through. And for whatever reason, the conscious mind, ego, chitter, chatter makes us believe that we're the only person in the whole entire universe with this set of circumstances. And nobody's ever going to understand anything. And people cannot understand that, you, that a person can be in so much pain and inner turmoil that they just want out. I didn't understand it before. I was one of those that bought into when I was a teenager. I remember a friend saying she wanted to kill herself and thinking that's so selfish. Why would someone do that until I lived through what I did and the losing my family in one night. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is what it's about, you know, and bringing perspective to it and bringing compassion to it. And, and, um, and also learning that feelings don't define us. They can inform us, but they don't mm -hmm. define us and that they pass feelings pass, you know? Yeah. Feelings can pass. If we one give ourselves permission to allow them to pass and then know how to allow them to pass. Right, and some so people are stuck in their feelings yeah. as if their feelings mean something. So it's also learning that they don't really mean anything unless they are, um, I really think they are there to inform us. And then again, you have to put on, you know, if you, if you really do the work, which a lot of people don't, but if a lot of people do, taking radical responsibility and looking at, well, these feelings, are they based in my inner guidance system or is it my ego masquerading as my inner guidance system and if the feelings are completely overwhelming this is my experience and they keep going on and on and there's a story attached to them of being a victim then it is not something that can guide you that it can perhaps guide you off course or hopefully guide you to something that will help the pain that will be constructive versus like painkillers or, you know, and, and there's reasons for pills for everybody, but I'm just saying like, they're covering the symptoms instead of the core. Right. And that said, you know, people specifically with PTSD, because I've come across one or two, I would say you go to a therapist, like, don't look at the stuff, whatever works for you to keep you healthy. But I also believe from all the work that I've done, that the real healing, the real expansiveness comes from getting to the other side of the story we tell ourselves. Yes. And, right? and the story keeps us in the past and the abuse and yeah. everything else. I totally agree. Sometimes we, sometimes a person would need to have the physical uh, medication just to help get them to a place where they can look at and really right. do that introspection, introspection, inner journey. We'll just say yeah. the inner journey. Yeah. And I just want to point out the beautiful lady behind you is your mom. Yes. And I, uh, I start my one woman show sometime. I'm going to do one of these interviews with a blonde wig and with that shirt on, because I actually start my <laughs> one woman show dressed as her with that shirt on coming out as her actually coming out as her from beyond. Cause I do a, a Shakespearean prologue in the very beginning of the show. And then I drop into her as like New York, 1970s, 80s. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. And so I use that in my show. I just wanted to, you know, to honor her and to honor you. I mean, this is so, there, there really aren't any words for what it can help others reclaim, not re-imprint but reclaim and remove from themselves so that they can really move forward in their life and whatever it is that they came here to do. Yeah, I want to share something about the, uh, also the journey of the creation of the One Person yes. Show. This is how it worked for me, for any people maybe who want to do this for themselves. There's two reasons to create a solo show. One is to heal, well, there's several, but I would say the biggest ones for me are to heal myself first and then heal others and to creatively express ourselves. But yes. for me, the process, I didn't ever think I'm going to help other people when I started. I just knew I needed to express myself and heal myself. And the very first version of the show, I didn't have a voice for my mother's character. And I say I played 12 characters, but I don't even know. I, don't, I didn't dress up as her in the beginning of that show, but I did, I did use the picture. But I would speak about her because where I was in my journey is I felt like she didn't have a voice. She only had it through me. 
Mm. The level of healing, and I see that with my clients too, that they have characters that all of a sudden will come alive after they've done the healing work. And now my mother, my mother's character is like vibrant, funny, tragic, like she's, and I get to play her. And it's like so much fun to do. It's so much fun to do that. And so the process is interesting because then she came to life in the second version of the show. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you'll promise to come back another time. We can talk about this. Yeah. It's like, Absolutely. oh my gosh, <laughs> we could have a marathon just on, on wherever this is going to take us. Absolutely. You have a gift that you want to share with our viewers. I do. This is for those viewers who have a big story in them, or maybe they're not sure what the story is, but they think there's something there, right? Because usually there is. There's something behind the story we tell ourselves, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to have as dramatic a story as I have to create an amazing show and to get the healing from it. Because like you said, you said something really important about how people feel they're so alone. I could, like, at some point, I won't go into the story now, but I had to do the show. I had to do the show for myself. And then at some point I was like, oh, I'm done with that. I love expressing myself and being paid to express myself. But I have, I, it's, it's almost like my duty to give this to other people so they yes. know they're not alone. And so that's the whole thing. Like some people, just, you know, write, write the show to heal yourself. Or if you even think you want to express your talent, right? Because how do you normally get to express your talent you have to wait to be cast or something but with a one person show I do Shakespeare in my show because nobody would want to hear me sing but a lot of people sing right or put your poetry in and stuff like that so I have a, um, a seven part training that is the seven steps to create a successful one person show and has my process in it what I did what I did that I feel like is missing in other you know, classes and things like that. And, and it's virtual. So how can they find you, beautiful lady? How can someone contact you? I think the best way, there's, there's many ways. Um, <laughs> I'm on Facebook as my name, Brenda Edelman. I also have a Facebook page that is Create a Solo Show. I have, um, and my main website is forgivenessandfreedom.com, which kind of has everything on there that I do, a lot of the forgiveness work too. And uh, yeah. That's, that's that. Forgiveness and freedom. A and D. Yeah. Forgiveness and freedom.com. And um, I'm sure I have at least one, two, three opt the free opt-ins gifts on there <laughs> having to do with, you know, the many things that I am passionate about. Basically I'm passionate about healing through forgiveness, sharing what I've found that works and, um, and how to present your story boldly, creatively in many forms. So that you can reach people like if you're scared to tell your story tell it because you know that you'll save someone else and someone else will not feel like they're alone I, I had one woman tell me her father killed her mother when she was like when she was younger she was she was still very young she was in her 20s and seeing my show allowed her to know there's light on the other side you know That's so important because th there was a time several years ago where I went through such a dark period. I didn't think I'd ever see the light again. And to know that there's light on the other side, that people like you experience these things that you only maybe see on TV. It's like, it's not real. It's just a screenplay. Well, maybe not so much. Right. I'm not happy that you went through it. What mm -hmm excites me is that you had the courage and still have the courage to do this work to help others and it still continues to help you as well yeah still continues to help me i swear even though i've done the show so many times or talked about it specifically when i'm doing the show i'll learn new things about my family about myself i'll just it's everything's about being intentional while i'm doing it and knowing that i'm reaching different people is what i'm saying so it's that's quite amazing as far as the healing process with sharing our, our stories too. Yeah. And Thank once you. again, beautiful soul, it's forgivenessandfreedom.com and Brenda Edelman, that's A D E L M A N on Facebook. Great. Thank you.
thank you so much for being here again and I look forward to the next time <laughs> whenever <laughs> our schedules will match up. Do please share these episodes and take the time to rate, review, and subscribe. It helps us to give more voice and express for more people. Thank you so much for being here, beautiful soul. Thank you.